Hi, my name is Mariana, and I am an instructor at GameU, and I'm going to show you how to model a jack-o'-lantern in 7 easy steps. Step 1. Model the pumpkin. In Blender, start off with a blank scene, click the Add button in the top left-hand corner, then click Add UV Sphere. Options for the sphere you added show up in the left-hand corner. Adjust the segments to 10 and the rings to 12. Use the scale tool to size your pumpkin down. Squish it just a little bit. We'll do more detailing on the shape later. Now we're going to make the objects that will cut into the pumpkin, which makes it a jack-o'-lantern. So we're going to add a cube. Click on the blue wrench in the right hand column, which will bring you the modifiers. Click add modifier and find the subdivision surface modifier. Right next to the title of the modifier, there is a drop down arrow. Click it and hit apply. This will make the changes affect the geometry itself rather than simply act as a preview. Click on the object and edit it in edit mode. Make sure you are selecting the faces, which you can adjust in the top left hand corner by clicking that face button. And then click on the faces you want to manipulate. Click on the button up top to activate soft selection. I am using the move tool to adjust the position of the faces and make this object look vaguely like an eye shape. While clicking and dragging with the move tool, you can use the scroll wheel on your mouse to adjust the range of the soft selection. So if you go in one direction of scrolling, the selection becomes larger, and then the opposite if you go the opposite direction. Once I'm happy with my shape, I go back into object mode so I can move the whole eye piece and then I move it into the pumpkin so that it intersects. It is important for it to intersect so we can add a boolean modifier. Next to the word object in the boolean properties, you can click the eyedropper tool and click on the eyeball piece that we just made. Make sure you're applying the boolean function to the sphere that we made that is the pumpkin and not on the eyeball piece. So you want the sphere, go into modifiers, click boolean and then make the object of the boolean the eyeball piece. You will know this works when you can hide the eyeball piece in the outliner on the top right by clicking the eyeball next to the eyeball piece. And when you hide the eyeball you will see it's cut in shape into the sphere or the pumpkin itself. Once you know that works, the beauty of modifiers is that you can continue to adjust the eyeball and the change will happen in real time. You'll see the cut out change shape as well when you hide the eyeball again.
So next I'm making the cap of the jack-o-lantern itself by cutting out the top portion of the pumpkin here. You're going to select the pumpkin, go into edit mode, and face selection from there, and then select the top faces of the pumpkin. While selected, right click, go to separate by selection. This will make it so that when you go back into object mode, you can separately click on the cap and the pumpkin or the rest of it itself. Here I use the move tool so I can just lift up the pumpkin top a little bit so I remember that I cut it out. Next we're going to mirror the eye that we made. Go into modifiers, add modifier, mirror. Select the eye as the mirror object using the eyedropper tool right next to it. Now you can see that interacts with the previous modifier we made where we boolean the eyes out. Now that the eye is mirrored, you will see two eye holes in our sphere, or the pumpkin. Alrighty, next we are making the nose of this jack-o-lantern. Add a cube, size it down using the scale tool, and rotate it about 45 degrees so that it can be a triangle. Go into edit mode and go into edge selection from there. Select the bottom most edge after rotating the cube and bring it up so that it looks like as if there's only three faces all the way around. And then go back into object mode and use the move tool so that you can move it into place where the nose would be. Now select the jack-o-lantern itself again, where your original boolean modifier is, add a new boolean modifier, and change the object to be the nose. And make sure that the boolean is on difference, not intersect or union. And again, you can check your work by hiding the nose object in the outliner up top right. Step 2. Model the top and stem. Alrighty, so now we're going to make the stem of the pumpkin. Go to Add, top left, Add Insert Cylinder, change the vertice count to 6. In object mode, use the Move tool and the Scale tool to shape it down to the size of the stem and move it to the top of the cap of our jack-o-lantern. top left, you'll go into edit mode, and then insert an edge loop using the tools on the left hand column, and put an edge loop just right in the center of that cylinder. Still in edit mode, go into face selection, select the top face of our stem, now use the move tool to move it and adjust the shape of the stem. Then rotate the top face as well. Now to truly make it look like a stem, I actually grab the bottom face of it and use a scale tool to make it thicker so that it looks like it's growing from the top of the pumpkin. Now I'm back in object mode and just rotating the entire stem so that you can see the curve that we added. Here I am further detailing the pumpkin. Grab the middle edge in edit mode using edge selection. Turn on soft selection up top and use the move tool to move that middle edge downward. This will squish your pumpkin down making it bottom heavy.
Grab an edge that's closer to the top and use the scale tool to taper that pumpkin as it goes up. To make the pumpkin appear flatter on the bottom, I grab the centermost vertice, make sure you're in edit mode and vertex selection, and then move it up with the move tool and this will make the pumpkin look flat. Step 3, face cutouts. Next step is to make the mouth of the pumpkin so that we can insert it and boolean that to be the whole of his mouth. Insert a cube, widen it, and put an edge loop in the middle. We put an edge loop right in the middle so that we can make this mouth symmetrical as we edit it. To edit the mouth in symmetry, make sure you are in edit mode so you can grab the faces at the ends. Um, to grab one face and have it affect the other side, you need to select the X button in the top right where it looks like a butterfly symbol. Unfortunately, I had to extrude and that does not work in symmetry. So I'm extruding faces from one side to make the mouth longer and then mirroring the object over using the mirror modifier. With this, you can still edit in symmetry. Just make sure you apply the mirror modifier so that it's one object in the end. Alright, now back to our base, we're adding one more boolean modifier to it and selecting the mouthpiece we just made as the object. And again, you can hide the mouthpiece and see the hole that it made in your model to make sure that the modifier was applied right. Here I'm just making further adjustments to the face by moving the objects where I see fit, making the stem a little bigger, and now applying all the modifiers that I hadn't previously applied because I am satisfied with the changes I've made. Step 4, Shaping. Select the top of the pumpkin and the stem we made. Right click, click Join. This will join them so that you can select them as one object rather than having to continually click them separately. With them joined, we're going to move the object or the lid now together and rotate it a little bit so that it's slightly ajar so it almost looks like you can look inside the jack-o'-lantern. This gives the render some visual interest. Alright, now that we can see inside the jack-o'-lantern, or that will be the goal anyway, we want to solidify it so that it's not just one plane going across, it actually is geometry with thickness. So click on the jack-o'-lantern, object, add the modifier solidify, adjust the thickness of the solidify to your liking, then hit apply. It is very important to apply the solidify modifier before applying your boolean modifiers.
Now when you hide the objects that are cutting into the jack-o'-lantern, like the eyes, nose, and mouth, you'll see that you can actually see through into the pumpkin. You can now permanently hide or delete the eyes, nose, and mouth objects since we won't need them. Make sure you solidify the top of the pumpkin as well. You do this by going to modifiers, add modifier, solidify. Adjust the thickness to match the rest of the pumpkin. With the added thickness, I'm just adjusting the placement of the object in object mode now so that it looks like it's resting on top of the rest of the pumpkin. Step 5, Texturing. Click on the red ball in the right hand corner. This will show your materials. Add a new material by clicking on the plus sign button. Name the material orange by double clicking on the text and typing it in. To preview your material, make sure you click on the button in the top right hand corner of the viewport. Now we're going to adjust the shading of the model so that you don't see all these faceted edges. We don't want our pumpkin to appear solid or hard. Go to the green triangle where it says Object Data Properties, go to Normals, and check on Auto Smooth. Adjust the percentage so that you can see the hard edges on the vertical lines, but not on the horizontal lines. For me, the perfect number was 22.7. Do the same thing for the top of the jack-o'-lantern. Apply the orange material to the top of the jack-o'-lantern, then go into edit mode, select the faces of the stem, and add a brown material. You add a new material by clicking the plus sign in the material editor, add a new material, label it brown, and then make sure you apply the brown to the faces selected. Now adjust the brown by clicking on the base color and finding the brown you want. To add more realism to our jack-o'-lantern, we're going to make the inside lighter. Go into edit mode while selecting the jack-o'-lantern and select all of the inside faces. Make a new material, label it light, change the base color to a light yellow, and apply it to the selected inside faces.
Make sure you do the same process to the top piece of the jack-o'-lantern. Step six, the candle. To make the candle, we're going to insert a cylinder, scale that cylinder down and place it inside the pumpkin. Then to make the flame of the candle, we're going to insert a cone. Make sure in the properties you change the vertices to 6 and the base fill type to triangle fan. In edit mode, grab the bottom most vertice of the base of the cone, drag it down so that it can look like a low poly flame. To make the flame look rounder, we're going to grab the edge around the bottom of the flame, click on the bevel tool in the left hand column, and drag the bevel out. In the properties of the bevel tool, change the segments to 2. Now here I adjust the shape of the flame just a little further by selecting one of those edges that we just made and using the move tool and the soft select to give it a little twist. Now in object mode, make that flame smaller so that it fits inside the jack-o'-lantern and place it right above the candle base. Select that candle base now and go into Object Data Properties, that upside down green triangle. Click on Auto Smooth, make sure you check it on, and I change the value to about 60 so that the top is still flat and hard while the sides of the candle base is still smooth. Now we're going to go into the Material Editor, that red ball in the corner, add a new material and change the candle base to whatever color you want. Do the same process to the candle flame. I labeled this fire and I made the fire color a bright orange but you can make it again whatever color you want. It could be a magic fire, this could be a magic jack-o'-lantern. So far I've only changed the base colors of these materials but for the flame and the candle base we're actually going to change the emission value as well. Adjusting the emission value will give the flame and candle base a glow effect. While in the material viewport Adjust the color of the emission and the emission strength to your liking. Now to make the flame transparent, we're going to go into blend mode at the bottom of the material editor change it to alpha blend, and then adjust the alpha value right under emission strength. This will make the flame transparent or see-through. To better see the effect of the transparency and the emission, I'm going to go into the render preview mode. This is right next to the material viewport button that we clicked earlier in the top right hand corner. This will allow you to preview shadows and again see the transparency and the light effect we just did. Step 7, the lighting. 
To add some lighting to the inside of our jack-o-lantern, we're going to click Add Point Light and place that point light inside the flame. In the lighting parameters on the side, adjust the color to be, again, match the color of your flame. You can make it white, you can make it orange, and adjust the power. Looking at how the light affects our shape, the jack-o'-lantern looks very plastic-y. The light doesn't add any warmth to our jack-o'-lantern, specifically in the shadows. So to add warmth in our shadows, we're going to adjust the subsurface of all of the materials we made. To add subsurface, you just need to adjust the value and change the subsurface color to be a warm orange. At this point, I'm adding more lights, like a spotlight in the top right hand corner and another one on the left side. These spotlights are just for a good render when we want to save an image of this. To add to a pretty render, we're actually going to change the background color as well. So go into World Settings, which is in the Properties panel on the right hand side. Click on the red button that kind of looks like a globe. And change the background color using the slider right there. For a Halloween vibe, I'm making the background color a dark bluish purple. Now I'm continuing to adjust the lighting and the subsurface values of all the materials till I get a result that I like.
Alright, we are done with our jack-o'-lantern. Thank you so much for watching, and please check out our other videos for more modeling tutorials. See ya!